video, I'm going to be talking about batteries you would typically encounter if you were making, say, an off-grid cabin, weekend cabin, or you had just a few uh, appliances that you wanted to power from a solar system or from a backup power system. Now, these are um, sealed batteries. These are um, AGM batteries, and they're sealed. You cannot remove the caps. You can't put uh, water in them, and they're they're non-spillable. You would typically look for this type of a battery, uh, say in, in a, a room that, uh, an occupied room for example, where you have some concern over um, any type of um, gases that would be given off typically when a battery is being charged. Uh, these are what's called a group 31 battery. They're basically 100 amp hour batteries and these are 12 volt batteries. Now behind me is the next upsized battery we would see typically in a small solar project. Uh, this is referred to as an L16 battery. It's approximately uh, 390 amp hours at six volt. Again, this is a six volt battery. And then we go up to the Rolls, which is a thousand amp hour battery at uh, six volt. So we're getting into, uh, if we're looking for some serious backup power, uh, we would be utilizing a battery of this capacity and I typically uh, see more of uh, this size than any other battery in, a, in, in an off-grid home. It's, uh, it weighs just a little over 100 pounds, so it is maneuverable uh, in a home uh, if you're going to put it in a utility room or a garage. When you get in this size battery, which weighs several hundred pounds, it can be a little bit problematic if you're trying to put this in a residential home. Um, now, anytime you're using six volt batteries or you're using 12 volt batteries and you need a different voltage. For example, some of those larger inverters run on uh, 24 volt or 48 volt electricity, not 12 volt. So we're gonna talk a little bit about series parallel battery connections and we're gonna use the 12 volt batteries as our, as our model, but we could be doing the same thing with six volt batteries and um, the, the principle would be the same. So in the first case, we want, these are 12 volt batteries and we want to have um, a 24 volt battery bank. So in that case, we would, we would be hooking these batteries together. This is uh, going from negative to positive. And the same thing over here, we're going negative to positive. And of course we'd be tightening down the, the nuts nice and tight, but um, then at each end, we would go negative to negative, and the other end, positive to positive. So we have 24 volts coming down this leg or string. We have 24 volts coming down this leg or string. So now how do we connect this to an inverter or to a load? This is the mistake most most of the novices will make. Um, you would not connect it like this because if you notice the path for the, for the power through this leg is shorter than this leg. So the batteries over time will become unbalanced as far as their charge level and what they can produce. So you want to always do um, what we would call reverse return or we're at the opposite corner. So whether the, the electricity is flowing this way or flowing this way, it has to go through the same amount of wire and the same length. So again, this would be typical of a 24 volt system. With this type of connection, it's the same length, the same route, if the power would flow here through this battery, it's going right to the battery terminal, but then it has to go through this short length of wire to here. If we go the other way, we're going through this length of wire, through this path, and into the terminal here. So no matter which path we take, the, the length of travel and the resistance is the same. So these batteries on this side 
and the batteries on this side are going to both see the same level of charge and discharge in actual use. And that's what we're trying to make sure happens. A battery bank made up of six volt batteries wired the same way, we would have six and six 12 volts here, six and six 12 volts here. So we have 12 volts, 12 volts. So this would be a, at this connection, we would have 12 volts out. If these are 12 volt batteries, which they are, we would have 12 and 12 in series. This is po positive, negative, positive, negative. So we have 24 volts here. We have 24 volts here. So we have series parallel. So this arrangement gives us a total of 24 volts. That's 24, 24, 24 volts total. And we have the advantage of having double the amperage. So in this case, if this is a 98 amp hour battery, then together we're our 24 volts at 98 amp hours, 24 volts at 98 amp hours, and out we have 24 volts at double 98 or approximately 200 amp hours available to us. So that is why we sometimes connect batteries in a series parallel we want to either increase our amp hours or increase the voltage or both. Once you get an inverter up above 1500 watts, uh, which this would easily power, um, especially if you get into 20, 2400 watt inverters, uh, those will easily operate a microwave oven, uh, certainly run a refrigerator, um, multiple light bulbs, um, uh, you could use that to, to charge up other devices, uh, but in, in this type of arrangement, you definitely could run small kitchen appliances, refrigerators, freezers, um, and that would be the reason you would, you would go to this multi-battery arrangement is to keep the voltage up and the amp flow down. And for how long can you run it? Oh. As far as how long, uh, appliances will run on any given battery bank size. We basically are looking at what is the amp hour of the battery and we're looking at the amp requirements of the appliance and for example if a microwave oven would require um, uh, say 15 amps of power we just merely divide the 15 amp load into the amp hour capacity of the battery and we can get an idea of how long that appliance can be operated from battery bank. Where a microwave might be running a few minutes, a refrigerator, for example, um, something like this could run a refrigerator for several days.